Aubrey, how are you today? I'm great. Hello, Jessica. How are you? I am so well, and I'm excited to talk about the very efficient writing advice for you guys today. We are going to give you advice for every scoring category that increases your score for both task one and task two, right? So you you win you win so many times today. So many wins. Yes, I know. So many of our listeners really need to get that seven or higher on writing. And there's a lot that goes into it. So I'm always excited when we can break it down and give you guys very useful tips and strategies for improving your writing score. Exactly, exactly. So today's episode was inspired by a student question. But before we get to that question, we want to uh, just mention a recent episode we did that was so much fun. And if you guys missed it, Oh, you have to go back and listen. Aubrey, do you know which episode I'm talking about? Yes, it was 1363. Yep. It was called Examiners Love to Laugh at This Vocabulary. This would be really fun to bring into IELTS speaking, to think about and talk about things that are really funny, things that make you laugh. So yes, be sure to scroll up if you missed that episode and hit follow because if you missed that one, you're missing some great episodes. Totally. All right. So Aubrey, what was this student's question? Yes, this was from Paul on Spotify. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Who said, can you please give more tips for academic writing task one and task two? So we read this. We like to do episodes about writing, but I loved the idea of giving strategies that will help you on both writing task yeah. one and task two. Totally. Um, because, of course, they are very different, right? right. Uh, let's let's review quickly. Let's say maybe somebody is new to IELTS or new to the show. Let's talk just briefly about what what is academic task one and academic task two exactly? Yeah. So first of all, academic task one, you're usually describing a chart or a graph. There are numbers, there's information. And the first thing is you have to analyze that information. And then you're writing a pretty short essay, 150 mm -hmm. to 200 words, including the most important numbers, showing the examiner that you can analyze this information and write about it. Exactly. And task two is totally different. Task two is a four paragraph essay where you answer a question um, about a specific topic and you have to talk about your opinion, other opinions, problems, solutions related to this topic um, about the world at large, right? It's not a personal question. It's going to be a little more elevated, right? Like about the environment or education. So d totally, totally different types of writing formats. So that's why it's really interesting that today you're going to get advice for every scoring category that increases your score on both. Exactly. And for those of you preparing for the general exam, it's important to recognize that task two is exactly the same, whether you're taking general IELTS or academic IELTS. So you are going to learn strategies as well today that are really going to help you as well with your writing score. Um, and I just want to highlight the fact that I was just moving my chair and my arm fell off and it looked really funny. So if you guys want to see me kind of fall on screen, go to our YouTube channel, guys, IELTS Energy TV. I'm sad I missed that. I'm going to have to go watch the video. <laughs> yes, don't miss our YouTube channel, especially if you're more of a visual learner. You want to see our crazy yeah. hand gestures. All of our episodes are on IELTS Energy TV on YouTube. It is a lot easier to understand for many people when you can see us talking as well as hear us. So definitely, definitely check that out, guys. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the first scoring category. This is the only scat categories. Categories. <laughs> That's a fun name. <laughs> Have you played categories recently? Is that why you said category? <laughs> Not recently, but it is a fun game. Yeah. I would play uh, with you. Let's okay, <laughs> so this is the only scoring category that actually has a different label on task one and task two. Um, task one, the category is called task response. And for task two, it's task achievement. It's flipped Aubrey, from that, isn't it? Task achievement for task one and task response oh, for task two. Oh, you're correct. <laughs> Think. <laughs> this is confusing, Jessica. Why? Why do they have a different label? <laughs> oh, man. What a what a blooper reel today's episode Seriously. is. It's um, usually me that messes that up. It's because I wrote them in the wrong <laughs> order in our notes. <laughs> I take credit. <laughs> 
No, no, no. That was me. Okay. So task one, guys, task one, it's called task response because you're only responding. That's all you're doing. You're not um, thinking of your own ideas for anything. You are presented with a like Aubrey said, usually a graph with numbers. It's going to be a picture. And your response to that, how you can do that is very limited. You're only allowed to respond in a very specific way in order to score well, right? Um, you have to talk about the key things that you see on the graph. You can't talk about anything else that's not on the graph. So that's why it's called um, task achievement, right? Yes, we keep saying it wrong, but to clarify, right, task achievement is task one. So even though you are sort of just responding to what you see in these graphs, I, I guess that makes sense. Like you have achieved the score if you share the important numbers, right? If you share the most right. important numbers, then you have achieved the task provided to you. Exactly. Because there's only a certain way you can achieve it, right? You right. have to talk about these numbers in a specific way. Whereas the second one task response for task two, that's open, right? Your response is open. There are so many different ways you could answer this question and still fulfill the requirements for a high score. That makes sense. Okay, so I understand why there are two different names here, right? Because with the task two, a very open question, you're providing so many more of your ideas and then supporting them with examples from real life. So you're actually really responding to a prompt much more than task one, where you're just reporting the information you're given. Yeah, it should be called like task reporting is what it should be called that instead of task <laughs> achievement. <laughs> anyway, so that's the different task scores, guys. However, there is one thing in common that you can do on both task one and task two to score highly in the task category, and that is be specific. Now, how does that look in task one, being specific? Yeah, for task one, you're actually sharing the actual numbers and dates from the charts. You don't want any general information. You have to back up with what, what you're saying with the actual information from those graphs or charts. Yes. Yeah. Key numbers, right? You have to give me numbers in task one, key numbers. And task two being specific means that you are providing specific examples and details involving real people, real places, real times to support the opinions that you're stating. But neither the le neither the less, oh my goodness, <laughs> nevertheless... <laughs> I kind of wish neither the less were a word. It's not Me guys, too. but it's a really fun one. <laughs> I wish it were a word. So in both guys, you have to be very specific. Now, let's move on to the rest of the scoring categories. All right. So cohesion, coherence, cohesion. Um, is how we glue together our ideas, right? With linking words. Coherence is, do these ideas themselves make sense? So both of those ideas are contained in one category. So what is the best piece of advice to get high scores on both essays, task one and task two, for cohesion coherence? Yes, linking phrases, transition phrases. You have to show the examiner that you can tie your ideas together in the way that a, a native speaker would with these linking phrases. It's a little less um, natural feeling to do that in general task one letters and the academic task one. You have to still use linking phrases to tie your ideas together. Task two, it feels a little more natural. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm writing. This feels like an academic essay. This makes yeah. sense to use linking phrases, but regardless, you need them for both task one and task two essays. But that's a good point, though. I think it is a lot more common for students to remember linking words in task two and to forget them in task one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we're telling you right now, it, you need the same proportion of linking words in both, which means almost every sentence in both of your essays, task one and task two, almost every sentence needs some sort of transition phrase. Yes. And you can't repeat, you can't just use the same one over and over, right? You can't say neither the less <laughs> if you're Jessica <laughs> or like nevertheless, if you want to use a real English word, <laughs> you can't repeat them and use them over and over. So you need to learn a plethora of linking phrases so that you are ready for your essays. Well done with the word plethora there, word. Aubrey. <laughs> um, all right. Vocab. Now here's a simple answer, guys, for both. You need to use 
interesting, less common vocabulary. In fact, guys, if you look at the scoring descriptors for task one and task two for vocabulary and grammar, they're pretty much the same, right? So it is all pretty much the same advice for task one and task two vocab and grammar categories. Um, but here's the best thing we could say today. Interesting, less common vocab. What does that mean? Right? You cannot, like, for example, if you want to say that something is good, don't say good, right? Use a more interesting, less common word. Fantastic, incredible, something that's a little that not every student will think to use. And right. you have to avoid repetition. So you need lots of interesting ways for, you know, adjectives. And then also, topic specific vocabulary, whatever yeah. graph you're getting, whatever task to essay you're getting, you need yeah. some less common vocabulary. So that's why we're recommending you're reading, you're listening to podcasts, watching TV, immersing yourself in English vocabulary so that you're learning this topic specific vocabulary. Totally. Exactly. Um, now let's move on to the last category, grammar. I just want to point out quickly, guys, that all of you listening today, you are working on all of these things by listening to this podcast right here. Um, like the episode we called back to at the beginning, we teach you guys the best, most interesting, less common vocabulary that you guys can use in speaking and writing. So make sure to hit follow right now because we also have great grammar episodes. Just last week, we did a great one on whether to say prefer, what was it, prefer to or prefer then, something like that. Right, yes. So, Go back and listen to that grammar episode, guys. We're, we, we help you every week here. Um, all right. So the uh, best advice we can give you today for grammar is to use a variety of sentence structures. You need to have some compound and complex sentences mixed in with simple sentences. Yes. And I think that might take a load off if students are feeling like I have to use past perfect and future perfect and all of these really unique grammar forms. No, not necessarily. In order to satisfy the requirement to have a variety of grammar structures, that is enough to have simple compound and complex sentences. So you could simplify a little bit, maybe some of what you're focusing on for the grammar score. You can't just choose a crazy, impressive grammar tense. There's one correct tense for what you're saying. And yeah, sometimes you're just going to overcomplicate and lose points if you're getting too complicated. Oh, totally. Because uh, guys, verb tense is over here. It is not sentence structure. Okay. These are two totally different things. <laughs> verb tense and sentence structure are not the same thing. So when we say a variety of sentence structures, we're just talking about how the sentence is constructed, right? How many subjects, how many verbs, <laughs> how many clauses. That's it. It has nothing to do with the verb tense. Like Aubrey said, there is only one correct verb tense for whatever you are referring to, right? For whatever you're talking talking about. Okay. So let's sum up the four best pieces of advice from today. What is the best thing they can do for high scores in task? Yes. For the task score, be specific. Use the numbers and dates for um, task one academic, and then have very specific ideas in your task two with examples and supporting details from your life or the lives of people you know or what you're learning in the news that are specific. you got to avoid being really general in these essays. Exactly. And for, for cohesion coherence, use a lot of linking words and transition phrases. Vocabulary, less common, interesting vocabulary in both. And for grammar, a variety of sentence structures not to be mixed up with verb tense. Exactly. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for chatting today, Aubrey. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, Jessica. See you guys next time. Bye.